Okay guys, welcome to the uh, demo of our PWM. We're going to be looking at uh, our signal, our waveform. I'll probably put it down here in this region here and we'll uh, view the waveform and see what it's like. I'm gonna try something a little interesting, some kind of camera computer magic. I actually have a scope on one PC and um, this is the code that's on the other PC. So you guys just have to bear with me. Hopefully I can get them all to line up and make it look right. But what I'll try to do is I'll try to expand the scope, show it, um, and then I'll move it down to the corner here and show you guys me changing the the period on the waveform and it auto updating in real life or real time real life <laughs> in real time anyway so that's what we're going to do now is I'm going to uh, put this guy on and essentially I'm going to go ahead and test my uh, ICD make sure it works so I'm going to go ahead and program that which we should see down here it should build it and then it should connect to the programmer and bring the programmer up. Now, usually, I don't know if I've explained this before, but usually what it's doing right now is like you see this AP download and AP download complete programming download and things like that. What it'll do is depending on what type of chip that you're going to be programming, the ICD, if you're using an IC, if you're using the microchip ICD3, it will have to download firmware for the actual ICD3 to program the like enhanced mid-range uh, versions. And that's what it's doing right now is it's programming that uh, firmware. It looks like that's finished. So now it is uh, programming the chip. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up our waveform here. So hopefully that comes in okay. Okay, so we've got our waveform down here. And as you can see, we got a nice, good looking PWM waveform. Now this 237 is going to equate to about, let's see, what is it saying? It's, it's about a 30, 32 point something uh, Hertz waveform. Um, I got to kind of turn my head and look, so forgive me. Yeah, excuse me. It's about 30, about 30.4. I'm going to, I'll see if we can't maximize this, um, bring it up, make it look big. Okay. So now there, there we go. Okay. So now it's at the bottom of the page here. You can see that there is um, I've selected over at the left. I've selected the uh, for the the scope to give me uh, the period as well as give me the uh, frequency here. So we can see that the period is about thirty point four uh, milliseconds, which then yields a frequency of about 32.88 hertz, so about 33 hertz, and that's what I was going for. Now I'm going to go ahead and minimize that back down to the corner here. Okay, so now we got that. So now what I'm going to look at is I actually went ahead and did an Excel spreadsheet of all those pitches. I don't know if you guys remember that, but from uh, whatever it was, the uh, the other the 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 other the other deal that we were working with um, when I did the pitches um, for the Arduino when we did all those different uh, different uh, frequencies and whatnot I actually made a spreadsheet of all that let's see if I can connect up oh I gotta type in my password here connect back up to my share here and I believe it was in, that's the Arduino stuff, so let's back up into our PWM stuffs. Uh, okay, we're back. Um, I found I found it, I ended up locating it. Gosh, it's amazing, you get so much stuff going, you end up forgetting where you put stuff. So, okay, so here's what I've got. I've got a whole bunch of different frequencies, and this is basically that calculation. I'm rounding up, and remember that one calculation that I showed you in the calculation portion of this for part one and part two of uh, basically the software of this PWM stuff. Um, it's basically going to be that uh, B, uh, B2, which I'm taking the FOSC, okay, and I'm dividing it by four times whatever our prescale value is, which I've set it to 16, and then, whoops, and then we are multiplying it by our frequency that we want, which, uh, like in our case, we're doing we're doing the 33 here. We're wanting 33 hertz. And then we take that whole piece, subtract one off of it, and then remember I told you there was that divide by two. For some reason you have to divide it by two. Divide by two, and that gives us 237. So then if I look back, okay, I've got 237 in there. And then when we saw in our scope right here, 
we saw the uh, the two thirty. We saw that it was about thirty two point eight or so hertz. So it's about the thirty three hertz that we were looking for. Okay. So I'm going to change it. Let's go up to one hundred and ten hertz. Okay. So that's a seventy one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this. I'm going to edit it up right here on the fly. Seventy one. Okay. That should be. Uh, what did I say that was going to be about 110 hertz? So that should be about 110 hertz. So I changed it to 71. I'm just I'm just going to hit the program button because it'll recompile it and program it at the same time. So now we should see a change over here. And there we go. See how the signal is now uh, over over on that over on that corner. How it's a lot narrower now because obviously it's a higher frequency. So the pulse widths are going to be a lot narrower. Now we're going to go ahead and maximize that or at least make the window bigger. Okay, now we got that bigger. Now you can see uh, the waveform is really is uh, like I said the the pulse width is a lot th a lot smaller and the frequency is higher and as we can see we've got about 9.2 milliseconds on the period and we got a frequency of 108.7 roughly. I mean, it's kind of jumping around a little bit. So, like I said, we're rounding, so we're close. I'm going to go ahead and pull that back down to the small window now. Okay. So now, and like I said, as we look, we were trying to do 110. It was somewhere around 108, maybe bounce around between 109. So, I mean, we're close. We're within a few hertz of it. So, you know, like I said, if you're, you know, measuring this with a pitch meter, you know, you're probably going to be, you know, it'll be off. But, you know, for all intents and purposes, it's close enough. So there we go. So I'm going to do, I'll do one more for, uh, one more for us to look at. Let's do, oh, I don't know, let's do 46. So that's 170. So let's do that. Since we're already at 71, let's do 170. So I'm going to reprogram again. Now we should see this widen back out since the frequency is uh, going to be slower. And there we go. And you see now we got the big wide pulses now over here in the corner. So we're going to go ahead and I'll maximize that again. Okay. So now that's all big. Now we're going to look at it. And we got about 21.9 milliseconds as our period. And about 45.76 hertz, roughly, um, as our frequency. So we're going to be close uh, to what we wanted. So we're going to go ahead and minimize that back down. There we go, back in the corner. And then we're going to look uh, look at our deal. We wanted 46, like I said, and we're running around 45 point seven something or other so you know it's more or less 46 we're a few points of a hertz off so obviously probably as we go larger in frequency our error is going to get a little more um, accumulate a little more so you know it's something that you have to play with and you can play with the prescaling also will help that out you could change prescales halfway through whatever you're doing if let's say you're moving it around or you've connected it to a potentiometer and you're reading that into an ADC and then you're deciding uh, what this uh, what this period number needs to be based on that. Um, you could have it based on, you know, maybe ranges that if it's within, you know, so many hertz to so many hertz, then you'll want the prescaler to be, I don't know, a one to one. And then if it's between another region, another range, then you want the prescale to be 16. And then another range, you want it to be 64. So, so there's a lot of play that you can play with it to get uh, your accuracy higher. And it's just something truly, I think, that you just have to. You may just have to play with. I mean, you can probably uh, calculate it. You know, definitely build a spreadsheet like this, um, like this going, and then you could take this number and basically run this in reverse and see what you get. And you'll probably get close to what we're actually actually are getting, which is, you know, when we get up higher, it was like our hundred and what was it, our hundred and ten or whatever it was actually hundred and seven point something. So you'll be able to see, you know, how far it's going to be off when you round, and then you can play with that prescaler to see which way you're going to do. And then you can play with the rounding, round up or round down, and see what you see where you get and see where your accuracies land. Because since we're doing since uh, the the period Period register is a digital register. You know, there's going to be um, 
some offness, and it's only 8-bit because you know it's, you're dealing with a timer, so it's only 8-bit. So you only have 8 bits of resolution. So you know you're, you're going to have some error there, just because stuff's going to fall between you know between bits essentially. You know it's it's not going to be perfect. So that's why if if it had a higher you know like if it had 16-bit, if it had double you know the amount, well then now we're getting we're getting close to where you got some resolution now. You know so that would be better. You know even even if you had you know a 12-bit or whatever or you know 15 bit you know would be 32768 so you've got some resolution there you know so anyway like i said that's pretty much it that's kind of all i wanted to show you guys um hope you guys enjoyed it that's our demo for this round i think i'll probably go ahead and we'll probably make a video before since the music one's kind of taken a little bit because there's kind of a little bit more programming that needs to go into that i'm not finished with that but one that i can probably bang out quickly for you guys would be um, doing PWM with a uh, LED since we're on the subject of PWM we may do uh, do that I know I mentioned in uh, I think it was a couple videos back that we would do something with with PWM waveforms or that I might tack something on with uh, uh, doing it with LEDs because that's that's how you dim LEDs and technically that's how you can also uh, dim uh, 120 volt AC lights uh, if you ever wanted to, that's how a, uh, whatever it is, how a uh, dimmer actually works. Now there's another component that we haven't ever talked about, but I think is coming up because I think it's, that's something really cool that the ability to switch AC with a solid state component, and it's not what you would think. And so anyway, um, some of you may have heard of this, and some people may not, but uh, we'll take a look at it in later videos. But that's you know a little teaser trailer for stuff to come. Um, we'll be seeing how to do that uh, shortly or soon. But anyway, before I get to rambling too much, that's it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, Take care, uh, like, subscribe, share, check me out on Twitter, Instructables, and uh, obviously here. I'm looking at you know maybe some other some other places I might get into. I was looking at uh, Vine also. Um, I've been posting little videos. I've been trying to post maybe demo videos and whatnot since they're little six second clips. I've been posting little six second little videos uh, whenever we do a demo like this on Vine. And you can find me on Vine. I'm just M I Sperry on Vine, and you can just find me there by just typing in M you know my handle M I Sperry, and you'll be able to find me. Twitter's the only one that was a little that was a little interesting because I couldn't I they didn't have my M.I. Sperry, so that one is M.I. Sperry E.E. -E. Um, check out Zazzle. I've got the, I'll put the link in the description as well. Um, check out Zazzle. We got some t-shirts up there. Um, they're uh, fairly comical for uh, electronics people and uh, math-minded people along. Uh, along. And so, um, you know, check that out too. That really helps support the channel. If you want one, grab one. Uh, share those with uh, with people. Uh, those those were kind of fun. They were a fun little thing. I just kind of pulled out of my head. Um, I'm gonna be adding a couple uh, different more uh, styles up there as well. A couple different more shirts. So um, I think we even have mugs. I think I have a mug up there now too, or maybe a couple mugs. Yeah, I think I have like a stein and a, and a mug up there too. So check those out. Those are cool. They help support the channel as well as your likes and your subscribes. And with that, guys, I think I ought to do it. Take care, guys. We'll see you next time.